Okay, now our car has a different material on it. Let's start animating it. So if I grab all of the parts of my car and move it forward and back, it seems like everything's working okay. But if I were to try to rotate my car, you'll see everything goes haywire. And the reason for this is that when I am moving my car all in one direction, all of the pieces are moving in the same direction. But when I'm rotating them, they're each rotating from their own centralized pivot point. So that's why we get this crazy deformation like this. So does that mean you have to animate each of these pieces individually? The answer to that is no. Animation is really difficult. So having to micromanage all of those individual pieces would just make it even more difficult. One of the tasks that is required before you can create animation is called rigging. Rigging is the process of preparing the models in a way that makes them easier to animate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a controller that allows me to animate all of these objects at once. First, just to keep myself organized, I'm going to name these objects. P cube one, although I know what that is right now, when I have three cars in this scene and a whole bunch of different environment pieces, I'll start getting confused about what that actually is. So I'm going to name it. There's a couple ways we can do that. I can click here and name it in my channel box, or I can double click here in my outliner and just name this car. I can then click P cylinder one and I'll call those front tires. You'll notice where I created a space in this. When I hit enter, Maya automatically puts an underscore in between the two words. And I'll call these rear tires. So now these three objects are very clearly part of my car. To understand this next part, I'm going to use an example of something you're likely already familiar with, which is the folder structure system and most operating systems. What I have right here is a folder of 10 images. You'll recognize some of them from earlier. As you likely already know, if I wanted to group these folders in a way for organization, I could create two different folders and put some images in one folder and other images in another. If I right click and say new folder and call this group A and another folder and call this group B, I can put the first five images in group A and the second five images in group B. Now you'll see I have two folders that each have images in them. If I were to delete group A, nothing would happen to the images in group B. And in fact, if I were to move group A to another folder somewhere else, group B would still be fine. When I moved group A, all of those files that were inside of group A went with it. Right. If I were to create another group and call it both groups and drag those two folders into that, you would see that I now have both groups inside of one folder. If I were to move this folder somewhere else, all of the images go with it. If I go to group B and just move one image somewhere else, you'll see none of the other images or the group or the group folders went with it. So again, this is a system you're likely already familiar with. This group system is called a hierarchy. To create a rig for this car in Maya, we're going to use a similar type of hierarchy system. Let me show you what I mean. If I create a box and then I duplicate that box, if I move each of these boxes, it doesn't affect the other. However, if I middle click and drag P cube two on top of P cube one, you'll see that now P cube two is underneath P cube one as if being inside of a folder structure. So although I can still move P cube two by itself, if I move P cube one, 
it takes P cubed 2 with it. This hierarchy system will allow us to animate a single object and have all three of our objects go with it. So let's go ahead and delete these cubes and create an object that allows us to control our car. I could use any object for this task, but if I use something like a sphere or a cube, that would also render in my scene. I want to use something that's not going to show up in the final image. So I'm going to go to Curves and Surfaces and open up that tab and just choose this circle tool. Now you'll see that this circle was created at the center of our world, and I'm just gonna kind of move this over to sort of line up with our car. I can use some of the numbers from our car to make sure the circle is in the right location. So again, 1.617, I can set this to 1.617. And then I can also just raise this up and scale it so it's something that I can easily grab and manipulate. We're going to call this car CTRL for control. This will let us know that anytime I see the letter CTRL in capitals, that this is a controller for an animation rig. Now before I do anything else, let's look at our objects. Our objects now have a lot of numbers inside of our channel box and a lot of inputs under our input channel. I'd like to clean it up because some of this extra information will bog down Maya and make it a little more confusing when I'm trying to animate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Modify and Freeze Transformations. You'll notice that what happens is all of my channels go back to zero and one as if I had created this at the origin and it's a completely new object. I'm also going to go to edit, delete by type, history, and watch what happens to all my inputs. They disappear. So now it's like this car body is a completely new object. I'm gonna do this to these other objects as well. Edit, delete by type, history, and modify freeze transformations. I'll also do this to our control. Edit, delete by type, history, modify freeze transformations. One of the reasons this is beneficial is because I can now type zero into these channels after I've animated the car to get it back to its original location. However, if I move this curve right now, nothing really happens to the car. What I need to do is select all of the parts of the car and middle click and drag those onto the car control. Just to make sure I don't accidentally animate the car models themselves, I'm going to select them and I'm going to add them to their own layer as well. When I click this, we'll see we get layer one. I'll double click and we'll call this car model. This will allow us to now hide and unhide the model, but more importantly, it'll allow us to click this button twice until it has an R in it, and that means I can't accidentally select my model. However, if I select this car control, you'll see that when I move it, the entire car goes with it, and if I rotate this car control, the entire car rotates with it. That means we're able to animate our entire car just by animating this one curve.